All right. So uh, yeah, thank you, Sachi, for the nice introduction, and thank you, uh, OSA, for um, I mean offering this opportunity to uh, arrange this technology showcase. It's a really great uh, opportunity to be here and present uh, physics uh, solutions for uh, metrology among all those great companies. So the topic uh, I wanted to have today is uh, about wavefront sensors for uh, tomorrow's and also today's challenges in optics metrology, because you do not need to launch optical systems in space to bring to the table real challenges in the optics metrology. And what I'm thinking of is really uh, the smartphone, uh, I mean, all those consumer electronics applications for the smartphone industry, for example, or the automotive industry as well, where you have very advanced and complex optical systems and you need uh, solutions for uh, the metrology of those systems. So um, really the, the presentation, the flow for the presentation today uh, will be uh, few words about physics, what we do, the technology that we use. And then I decided to focus on three main applications and markets uh, uh, who are, uh, will be like free space optical communication uh, systems. So laser beam metrology, uh, optical system alignments and collimation. And also then we'll jump, I will jump to the automotive and smart industry with MTF and optics uh, testing. And then finally I will uh, go uh, to the field of AR, VR, and mixed uh, reality systems, and specifically uh, meta surfaces, meta optics testing, and waveguide uh, characterization. And my colleague uh, Johan, as well, is in the networking, uh, the breaking room, uh, breakout uh, room. So feel free to join uh, the, the networking room afterwards or during uh, my talk as well. We'll be happy to discuss and sorry questions. And also we have some live demonstration I and mean, videos and replay and so on. So let me jump to uh, quickly to, to phasic. So what we do, our core competency is wavefront measurements. So measuring the spatial phase distortions. And what we do to do this is that we make the wavefront sensors, so the camera like this, and measure the wavefronts, but also fully integrated test stations. So we integrate the wavefront sensor into machines uh, so semi-automated or fully automated for production environment to do optics testing and beam testing. So PhaseX, uh, the technology that we use is patented. It's uh, a specific type of lateral sharing interferometry. And basically PhaseX is based in Paris, all the production are even in Paris, in France. And I work uh, for the US branch here uh, in San Francisco, California. And then we have uh, a pretty strong network of distributors in Asia uh, and Europe as well to serve all of our clients uh, worldwide. So the company was created in 2003. It's uh, pretty ISO 9001 uh, certified and more than uh, 40 employees today. So technology, quickly, the technology that we use called so quadri-wave lateral sharing interferometry has I would say four main advantages. First is the high resolution and sampling. So the, the spatial resolution, the size of the, the spatial extension of the, the face features that you can measure. And it's specifically very important if you want to measure a uh, really high, um, I would say frequency uh, distortion, phase distortions, for example. Then we have this unique capability to combine this high resolution with a large dynamic capability, which is pretty important uh, today, because the idea is that you combine the high resolution and the ability to measure large amplitude, large, large phase distortions amplitudes. And it's also translates to measuring high numerical aperture optics. If you th are thinking of uh, long wave infrared um, applications, measuring F over one optics in single path without using any relay lenses. A third advantage is that the analysis that we have of uh, the row images, the row interference pattern is made in the Fourier space. So it's a frequency based analysis. So we do not rely on intensity modulations. We are not depending on uh, intensity modulation if you have some in the beam path. And the last advantage, which is maybe a very important one because it's pretty unique, is the achromaticity. Um, basically, the measurement that we have that we give are not depending on the wavelengths, which means that. Uh, depending on the detector that we integrate, we have solutions from the UV to the long wave range. The measurement, the dynamics, the, um, the precision, the accuracy does not depend on the wavelengths. You don't have to calibrate the sensor if you change the wavelengths. And you can do the measurements at the design wavelengths of your optical system. Um, 
let's say, uh, let's jump to a quick comparison with the gold standard in optics metrologies today. So you have the well-known FISO interferometry. Um, then we have this technology, which is called quadrawave lateral shear interferometry, which is physics technology. And then we have the well-known Shack Hartman wavefront sensor technology. So if you compare them in terms of compactness, so both uh, wavefront sensors, they are like camera-like devices. So you, it's very, pretty compact compared to a bulky interferometer. In terms of sampling, the, the interferometers, they have megapixels cameras, so you cannot beat them. Uh, but we still have more uh, sampling capabilities than a Shackerman wavefront sensor. And if you think about the achromaticity, so the wavelength dependency, we are the only one technology that is truly by design and intrinsically achromatic. There is no, uh, I would say, post-processing tricks like with Shackerman's to be the chromaticity of the lenses. And with a FISO interferometer, you have a built-in laser source. So if you need to make measurements at different wavelengths, at specific wavelengths, you need to build or buy an interferometer for each wavelength uh, where you want to do the tests. And it's not a good idea to only rely on a 633 nanometers interferometer and then do, uh, I would say, simulations to see the behavior of the system and other wavelengths. Um, then the 72 vibrations, uh, it's, it's a camera, so it's like a shock atman wave from sensor. It's not sensitive to vibration. And for interferometers, uh, you, you have phase shifting interferometers that are not sens less sensitive to, uh, to turbulences, but still, uh, there is no reference arm. It's uh, the camera of phase is self referenced interferometric device, so not sensitive to, to vibrations. And then the last is the dynamic range. So it's pretty high with our camera. You can measure, to give an example, up to 500 micron peak to valley in terms of wavefront distortions, which is pretty, pretty, pretty unique. As I said, we do this from the UV to the long wave infrared range. So we do either the standalone wavefront sensors that you can integrate in your own optic optical test bench. And then we also do so custom optical test bench where we integrate the wavefront sensor, uh, the beam expanding system, uh, motorized stages, uh, cameras, sources, depending on the wavelengths you want to use to build uh, dedicated solutions to your needs. And then we do fully integrated test machines. So this one, for example, is a multi-wavelength interferometer. So you have basically a FISO interferometer. You do transmitted and reflected wavefront error measurements at different wavelengths uh, just with one machine. And this one is an MTF and wavefront error stations to do an un axis and half axis uh, wave from the R and uh, MTF uh, measurements of um, optics. So we do this for many, many various applications. I'm just going to focus on three main applications. But basically, historically, we also do uh, adaptive optics for high power uh, laser facilities. So we combine the wavefront measurements with a deformable mirror to optimize the wavefront quality. Uh, then we also do, uh, I would say, optics measurement and optics testing for space applications, military defense applications for the smartphone industry as well, uh, semiconductor industry as well. So we do pretty basically all the optics metrology uh, challenges uh, up to date. So let's jump to the, the first application I wanted to, to focus on, which is uh, beam and beam metrology and free space optical communication uh, metrology, systems metrology. So basically what we have to offer for uh, free space optical communication systems metrology is uh, first the test of optical filters and windows at their working wavelengths. This is something I said before. Uh, it's really important to do the tests, the optics test, the transmitted wavefront error tests, and reflected wavefront error uh, measurements at the design wavelength, the working wavelengths of your uh, optical system. And this is something you can do with the what we call the Kaleo multiwave, which is a, basically a FISO interferometer port. Uh, where you can tune the wavelengths and make the, the same uh, type of measurements. Then with the, all of our standalone wavefront sensor, especially in the short wave infrared range, uh, we basically give all the beam parameters, so waste information, divergence of the beam, even M square measurements, and the wavefront aberrations. It's pretty useful for laser system collimation. If you have a free space optical communication, uh, a, la a laser emitter, for example, and you want to optimize in live or in production, um, the collimation of your, of your system, it's a pretty straightforward. You just place the wavefront sensor and you see in live uh, the different wavefront aberrations and the divergence of the beam, so you can tune the system. 
and it's also related. So you can basically use the wavefront sensor or a custom test bench to optimize the alignment of the system, do also environmental testing because we have wavefront sensor that are compatible with vacuum conditions to do TVAC testing, for example. So if you want to test an optical system, systems at different temperatures, or if you want to check uh, mechanical constraints effects on the wavefronts, uh, this is something uh, we do as well. Um, and we have the, the largest uh, range of wavefront sensor in the short wave infrared range as well, with many, many different options. Then uh, I went to talk also a little bit about what we do for the automotive and smartphone industry in terms of modulation transfer function and wavefront error testing. So you see more and more uh, the big idea in the smartphone industry is to always shrink the design of optical system. And you come up with even, uh, even more uh, wide angle optics uh, with high chief ray angles, for example, that are very challenging to measure with current solutions for MTF testing. So what we provide is uh, the same system, actually the color multi-wave, which can be used to test optical filters, windshields on windows at their working wavelengths. And having the capability to measure large dynamics, especially for windshields, it's pretty useful because windshields are not uh, planar planar optics. Uh, they have some, they may have some power, they have some curvature. So it's very important to have this, this, uh, this dynamics capability. And then we have this also pretty unique capability to measure in single pass wide field of view optics or optics that have a very high, what we call CRA, which is a chief ray angle. And we can go up to more than 30 degrees in the chief ray angle and have still have the MTF on and off axis at multiple wavelengths. And also all the wavefronts aberrations that you can leave to the op classical optical aberrations. So you can just just do with this machine, for example, testing in production on different batch of lenses, but you can also do testing in R&D of assemblies and sub-assemblies to try to align the different optics between them and see in life uh, the evolution and the optimization of the wavefront distortion. Uh, finally, uh, a last very hot topic I would say is the AR, VR and mixed reality as well. Uh, industry where you have all those meta surfaces, meta optics, and also all those waveguides. So what we do for the AR VR uh, industry is offering uh, with one wavefront sensor, you can do two things for uh, meta optics. It's first, characterize the optical function of the meta optics because the, for example, if you take the example of a penchamatma very penchamatma very meta lens which is wave, which is polarization dependence. Depending on the polarization, you have a different optical functions. So the wavefront sensors that we have are not depending on the polarization, which means that you can vary the incident polarization and still be able to make the, the, the measurement of the optical function. And then we have this uh, meta surface face features inspection. So you plug the wavefront sensor onto a microscope and you are able to finally characterize all the different uh, refractive index features that you have in the material. So it's, uh, it's a green lens, for example, here, but you can also imaging uh, face vortices or imaging the nanopillars in the meta surface as well. So using the same wavefront sensor, you have the optical functions and the face features inspection. And then you have uh, also something that you can use to characterize like uh, waveguides, for example, that are using meta optics, because it's basically using the wavefront sensor to map the refractive index distribution in the waveguide and have a precise, very precise measurement of the refractive index distribution in the, wave, the waveguide. It's pretty, pretty convenient to use and pretty straightforward. So as a conclusion, I went just to I want to just to show you uh, what uh, the technology that we use at PhaseX, so the quarter wave lateral shrink diaphragm, we can do for optics metrology. So we build really wavefront sensors dedicated to optics metrology challenges. So from the standalone wavefront sensor to the fully integrated test machine that you can use in production. Um, and it's a good alternative to Shakatman and FISO interferometry, which are the gold standard in metrology nowadays. Uh, and we have especially advantages in terms of achromaticity, so measuring at multiple wavelengths without having to recalibrate anything. 
uh, the high dynamics capabilities, the high chief triangle for the wide and wide field of view optics. And, and finally, we can apply this and we apply this to many, many uh, metrology challenges of today's for defense space, automotive and consumer agreements applications. Um, thank you for your attention and we are, would be happy to discuss with you in the networking with my, my colleague, Johan.